What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and just when you thought it was safe to not have to see another GTX 1080 review, especially when everyone is just constantly waiting for the highly rumored yet unconfirmed 1080 Ti, we are gonna take a look at another GTX 1080, but this one's interesting because this guy here is speaking directly to my international followers. So what you think? You know, I'll be honest. I'm uh, kind of impressed by its proportions. I know, right? All right, but let me show you something here. Ugh. I kind of like the thin ones. Mm, but this one is about form factor. Yeah, but mine can fit in tight spaces. With girth, you can open tight spaces. It's like a master key. Whether you like thick or thin, the ITX lineup from Fractal Design is sure to have something that tickles your fancy. Remember, it's not the size that matters. It's all about how you use it. No, it's definitely the girth. No thinness. Girth, dude. Thinness. Girth. There's no contest. No, there's contest. It's girth. Now, today we are taking a look at Galax's new GTX 1080 Hall of Fame card. Um, it's not the first Hall of Fame card I've taken a look at, but I did not take a look at the 980 Ti. That stuck to my finger. Oh, well. I did not take a look at the 980 Ti Hall of Fame, but I did take a look at the 980. And one of the first things I noticed while taking a look at this card is aesthetically, it is pretty much identical. Nice long box here because it is a nice long card. You get a bunch of stuff in here. You get go, 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 Hall of Fame, game in progress, do not disturb. Put that on your door. Installation guide. And of course, the card itself. What is this guy? Oh, check this out. That's neat. That's something I have not seen actually included with a graphics card before. This is an anti-sag pole. No, it's not for your grandma. Actually designed to support the weight of your card. So you put that in your case and you can put this underneath the card and help support it. And then you can, I guess it helps. I don't know, we'll find out. I'm not putting this in a regular case though. But anyway, it, that way your card doesn't sag because it is pretty darn heavy. Other things that you get in here is, I guess, we'll, we'll be right back. Here we go, that makes sense. So it's almost identical to the other Hall of Fame cards we've taken a look at in the past here. But this one here, it's got this little bracket that you actually attach to the back of the graphics card. So you're not just like pushing up on the cooler shroud. This actually attaches to the back of the card right here with the included screws uh, like so, just like that. And then when this is attached to it, this guy here just pushes up into that little rubber spot. And then this is how you support the back of your card. That's actually a pretty neat idea because something people have complained about quite a bit with big heavy graphics cards like this is the amount of sag and stress it puts on the motherboard socket. So anyway, here it is right here. It has still got the bare kind of a brushed aluminum back plate on there. It's got two eight pin PCI Express power plugs and of course, the massive PCB on this thing, which is white. That's one of the things that people have always loved with the Hall of Fame cards, is they are perfect for white builds. They have a white face, white fans. People think they should have gone with a white backplate. I tend to agree, but an aluminum backplate, and then of course, the white PCB. Something else that's cool about this little adapter too, though, is it looks like you don't have to mount it just on the back. You can mount it right here on the side as well. If you wanted to do it that way, there are also some mounting points there. Now looking at the cooling pads on this thing, I can say that this does appear to be cooling the VRM as well as the RAM, as well as of course the GPU itself. That's something I know people are gonna ask because of the whole recent fiasco thing with EVGA. Um, so yeah, I can say that we do have thermal pads touching the VRMs and are going to their own heatsink right here. This, this plate I just showed you on the side is not only uh, an adapter for it mounting that little bracket, but it's also a heat sink itself as well. Now I'm not gonna go into all the specs and stuff of a GTX 1080. This has been out since May. This is now going into December, well, almost December. We have heard these specs over and over and over. So I'm sorry if you've never heard of that before, but I'm not gonna go into it. I wanna spend more time doing some real life overclocking and benchmarking of this guy right here, because I'm curious as to what the overclocks are like. And this has, a pretty beefy cooling shroud underneath the heat sink. Not only does it have all of its heat sink fins or uh, pipes here, one, two, three, four, five uh, heat pipes on here. We also have this, um, this huge shroud that is touching things like the VRM and the RAM 
and uh, the MOSFETs and all that stuff, which is gonna give you some good active cooling as the air blows down through the cooler to cool those components as well. So now that my Steam library is finished updating, let's go ahead and install this guy. Today's video is not gonna be a complete overclock, or excuse me, a complete review. I'm not going through all my benchmarks. I'm not gonna be putting up all the FPS numbers. And a card like this, I'm curious as to how far it overclocks. So that's gonna be the main focus of my video today. This is my desktop. I'm running Windows 10 on my test bench, I kind of have to if I want to take advantage of all of the DX12 stuff when I'm doing these tests, but whatever. Anyway, we have all stock settings going right here. I do not have the Uber mode fan button pushed. I don't know exactly what it's called, but when I push that button, the fans basically go to 100%. Um, we're not doing that right now. We're just gonna be checking out here uh, my own settings we're gonna play with. So we need a baseline. We're gonna go ahead and run Time Spy here uh, to give ourselves a baseline number so that we can actually monitor how far we actually came. Otherwise, we don't know how much of improvement there was. That's kind of the point of today's video. How far does this graphics card overclock? And is it good? I don't know. Let's find out. So while the test is wrapping up here, it looks like our core is settled at about 1987 and just dropped down to 1974. Temp, so as you can see, 62C. And uh, yeah, GPU load, 100%. And we have a lot of power limit available to us. This is only at 69, 70%. It's bouncing in the low 70s, high 60s. So that tells us we have a lot of power limit available. I don't know how much core limit we're gonna have though. I have not personally had a card come in here that can achieve a 2200 number. Um, 2162 are the highest numbers I have seen yet uh, come through this office and only two graphics cards have done that. So I'm curious to see what this one's gonna do. And then this is just a CPU test right here. So this has nothing to do with the GPU at all. Okay, so we started out here with a graphics score of a 7634. That's not too bad. We'll have to see how far that comes up now. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to go ahead and we're going to bump the power limit all the way up to 116. I'm gonna do the core voltage percentage all the way up to 100. What, basically what that does is it moves where the voltage slider is gonna go to 100%. Core clock, we're gonna add 100. Memory clock, we're gonna add 500. And then for fans, we're just gonna go ahead and kind of bump the curve up a little bit because we are overclocking it. In fact, those fans are very quiet. We barely even barely even heard it. So these are the settings we're gonna try now. Everything is applied. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and run this again, see what happens. So that time it went up to 2088, and that's where it settled. I actually bumped up to 2112, uh, but then it settled back down at 2088, or 2114, excuse me, that was its max. Um, that gave us an improvement up to 8153. So that's actually a bit of an improvement right there. But I do think we have a little bit more in this. So let's go ahead and go 150. Let's apply that. Let's do this again now with a 150 megahertz offset. That should put us right around 2160 before it steps down. But we have to see if it even starts to pass that 2160 megahertz mark. Oh, as you can see, we're getting a lot of artifacts right here at 2177. A lot of artifacts, but no crashing, that's weird. So let's go ahead and cancel that test. Okay, so let's apply our overclock again here. So I'm gonna do 130. I'm gonna go back to 500 on the memory. And I'm gonna put this back to 85%. We're gonna apply all that. Let's try it again. Yep, same artifacts. So I guess we'll try 125. And then that'll be our final test because I don't think we're gonna get much higher than the plus 100 we saw. And we'll talk about that here at the end of the video, why that is. And we still have a little bit of artifacting here happening at 2152. So unfortunately, this graphics card is not going to be one of my top overclocking cards that I have had come through here. Yeah, and at 2139, we're still getting all the artifacts. So we're gonna have to call it at plus 100 being as far as it would go. It's not bad. I mean, that got us a 2114 that stepped down slightly to a 2088. One other thing to show you real quickly too is the button on the back here, uh, what it does to the fan speed. So what you're hearing right now 
is 100% automatic. It's how it is out of the box. But if you push this button on the back, it literally overrides everything. It puts the fan at 100%. But be warned, it's noisy. Unfortunately, the Hall of Fame car did not break any overclocking records here. In fact, it's pretty run of the mill. 1080s are just, they're, they're so cookie cutter. All of them go to about 2050 to 2088. Some of them go farther up to about 2162. Some of them don't even pass 2000, but they're all, I'd say 80% of them are right around the middle of about 2088. This one being no exception, regardless of how much you give it extra power, how much you cool a thing, it all comes down to silicon lottery for the core. Now let's talk about why these cards are so damn similar when it comes to where they perform. The core, the main core on this, the uh, Pascal core for the 1080 is rated at 1607 megahertz with a 1733 uh, megahertz boost clock. This card, as you saw, automatically on its own without touching anything and using GPU boost 3.0, overclocked itself to over two thousand megahertz and then once it started to warm up a little bit it slowed down to about 1988. So if you compare where this card is sitting now compared to where the founders edition card is which is where Nvidia you know specs the card uh, is actually overclocking itself approximately 250 megahertz. That's that's actually really good. We're only able to achieve about an extra 120-ish megahertz by going in and playing with settings and doing stability testing. So unless you're the kind of person that just really loves to tinker and play around with the settings just to get the that ma that last little millimeter of performance, then this is the kind of card that you would just put in, leave it, and know that you're getting really good performance. I know it's rare to hear me say a card doesn't need to be overclocked, but you kind of don't have to with a card like this. It's overbuilt, it's overcooled, it's got everything you need. When I say over, that's good. We want more cooling than we need. We want more power delivery cleanliness than we need because that's gonna give us a really good gaming experience. Now, the weird thing about this card is if you live in the United States, it's it's kind of a unicorn. It's very hard to get your hands on them. They are not sold by retailers in the United States. This is an internationally available card, which means that uh, for once I had a video here that really was aimed 100% at my international follower base, which is kind of unique and kind of uh, rare around here. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Sound off in the comments if you have one of these cards. Let me know how far it overclocked, what your temperatures are like, and uh, what kind of system you're running it in. It helps everyone to kind of make an informed decision rather than just taking my word for it, which I would never recommend. Don't take only my word. Listen to uh, kind of form your own opinions by listening to everybody. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, I will see you in the next video.